The idea of a V8 powered Land Rover Defender is nothing new. In fact, the very first Defender V8 came out 40 years ago this year. But this is a very different proposition. This is the 386 kilowatt Land Rover Defender 90 V8, and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The V8 sits atop the Defender range with a price tag to match. The 90 starts at just over $220,000 before on-road costs, so you're looking at about a quarter of a million dollars on-road. Land Rover offers a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty and servicing works out at about $750 per year for the first five years. Intervals are 12 months or 26,000 kilometres, which is good news if you're the sort of person that does plenty of driving and there's also five years of roadside assistance. The Defender 90 isn't really a car that has any rivals to begin with, though I suppose you could make a case for a Jeep Wrangler at the lower levels. But certainly at this price point, it's a bit of a unicorn, so let's take a closer look. There are two sides to this video. The first is to examine the car as a Defender 90, the bits that are common to all variants. And then there's the stuff that's specific to the V8. If you've seen pictures or video of the Defender V8, you might assume that it only comes in black, but you can have white or bronze, or a metallic grey that's an extra $1,000. Now one thing to note is that because of its proportions, you might assume that the Defender 90, well I certainly did anyway, is small is not the right word, but compact. But it's not, it's enormous. If you include the spare wheel on the back, it's still as long as your typical mid-size SUV. It's two meters wide and very nearly two meters tall, and it weighs 2,471 kilograms. So it's a big car and it now has a very big engine. This is the five litre supercharged V8 that's appeared in all sorts of Jaguars and Land Rovers and Range Rovers over the years. Here it develops 386 kilowatts and 625 newton meters, which makes the Defender 90 V8 deceptively fast. It hits 100 k's an hour in 5.2 seconds and has a 240 km an hour top speed. It does like a drink though with a claimed combined fuel consumption of 12.7 litres per 100k, and you can probably view that as a best case scenario. Pull the door closed, and you can believe that this thing weighs two and a half tonnes. A good portion of that must be in the doors. This is actually my first exposure to the new Defender, and it's quite a moment when you step inside for the first time, as it's really like no other car in here. Now the new Defender copped a lot of flack from traditionalists when it first came out, because it's a very different car to the original. That was basic, utilitarian, all about function over form. Now, these exposed screw heads, for example, are a good example of what made the old guards so angry. They don't need to be there, they're just a design touch. In other words, form over function. But that's not the case, because this is a really useful interior. This horizontal bar offers plenty of storage space for wallets and phones and keys, and the rubber base means they don't slide around. There's also a USB-C port for the passenger. There's another big storage area down here, easily accessed USB-C and A and 12 volt outlets, really big cup holders, a wireless charging pad, and this isn't just a storage area, it's a fridge. All these buttons are nice and big too. Ideally in a four-wheel drive, you can operate the controls using gloves, in case it's cold or wet. And I reckon you'd be able to do that just fine. They're gonna struggle with the infotainment. Jaguar Land Rover has gone through a number of different infotainment systems in recent years, but I reckon it's finally got it right. It's quick, easy to navigate, and while there's a heap of stuff packed into here, it doesn't feel intimidating. There's smartphone mirroring, digital radio, sat-nav, voice control, and the like, and it all plays through a 15-speaker Meridian sound system. As well as the usual infotainment stuff, there are some cool driving features in here. It can show you the car's lean angle and its weighting depth, how the diffs lock and unlock as you drive along, and if the car's many standard drive modes aren't enough, you can create four combinations of your own. The 360 degree camera is also handy and there's an off-road mode to help you out in tight spots. The Defender 90 V8 also has the full suite of active safety equipment. The lane keep assist can be a bit insistent, not helped by the car's width, but in general, it's happy to sit in the background. The upside of the Defender 90's size is a back seat that's absolutely enormous and well equipped. This has got to be one of the best spaces for rear passengers that I've ever come across. Not only is there masses of space and plenty of light thanks to these big windows, including these strips up here, 
I've got separate temperature controls, heated seats, a pair of USB-C and 12 volt outlets, plus USB-A ports in the back of the seats. I've got code hooks, center cup holders, plus a larger bottle holder and storage area down by my feet. It's absolute luxury. The boot ain't so flash. Here we find the compromise of the Defender 90's truncated length. With the rear seats in place, you can't really fit anything in there. And while they do fold down, it's still a bit of an awkward space. What would really help would be the ability to slide this second row forward as there's so much rear room, you could easily sacrifice some for a bigger boot. Anyway, again, it is very well equipped with a 230 volt and 12 volt outlets, takeaway hooks on both sides, and even buttons to raise or lower the rear air suspension to make it easier for the dog to jump in and out. Though, it's gonna need to be a very small dog. Now for the answer to a very curious question. What exactly does a 386 kilowatt short wheelbase Land Rover Defender actually drive like? I said at the start of this video that the Defender 90 V8 doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that's partly because you've got this massive car that doesn't have any luggage space, but it's also because you've got this rugged off-roader that's now got a full-length sunroof and head-up display and fancy stereo, but mostly it's because of the way it drives. I mentioned the G63 in the title of this video because like AMG's inexplicably popular SUV, the Defender 90 V8 is a massive engine stuffed into an otherwise off-road focused vehicle and that's never really a recipe for success. Don't get me wrong, pulling out of junctions or onto the highway at full noise in this thing will never fail to put a smile on your face. The engine's a bit more muted and doesn't have the exhaust fireworks of older versions but it still sounds so angry. And to be honest, the more I drive it, the more I like it. The throttle calibration feels off though. Especially in comfort mode, it's way too doughy and unresponsive. You can actually flex your foot a fair amount and nothing happens. I suspect that's to try and help fuel consumption and make sure you don't rock into the car in front, but it's just too slow on the uptake. Selecting dynamic mode helps a bit, but not enough. Selecting dynamic mode also firms up the already firm ride, but as mentioned, you can mix and match settings by creating your own custom mode. Look, given what this thing is, which is a tall, heavy, extremely powerful, short wheelbase off-roader, it actually handles pretty well and can carry a surprising amount of speed. What it isn't is a performance car. It can go quite quickly, but it never really feels like it wants to. The trouble is, it's not really an off-road car now either. A gravel road like this is as likely to be as close as a Defender V8 ever gets to the great outdoors. Still got all the smarts, terrain response system, low range gearbox, locking diffs, up to 900 millimeters of wading depth, but there's only so far off the beaten track you're gonna go on 22 inch rims and road tires. Now, Land Rover does actually offer the Defender V8 with 20 inch rims and all terrain tires, and I'd absolutely tick that box, because then when you're driving out here, you wouldn't have to worry so much about punctures. And on a gravel road like this is arguably where the Defender V8 makes most sense because it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's also still rated to tow three and a half ton and while I wouldn't necessarily want to put that much on the back of a short well based Defender, you could certainly tow a small boat or caravan, no problems, and then you'd have somewhere to put all the stuff that won't fit in the boot. What we have here is a car that's jumped the shark. There's a lot to like about the Defender, even in slightly compromised 90 form. The supercharged V8 gives it performance it doesn't need, can't really use, and compromises the talents of the more regular variants. Of course, I'm aware that I've completely missed the point of this car. You can't approach it rationally. People will want it and buy it because it looks unbelievably cool, goes fast, sounds great, and makes them feel like a rock star. It's also almost $150,000 cheaper than a G63 AMG. It doesn't need to be practical because it's probably a 5th or 10th or 20th car. So the Defender 90 V8 doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That's probably exactly why you'll love it. But I'll have my Defender as a 110 with a nice diesel and pocket the 100 grand thanks. 
Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, and leave us a comment down below with any cars you want to see us review.